This is Barry Canada from L3 Success and LunchtimeRecordings.com. Welcome back to another episode. We're at number 10 already, and uh, it, I'm so glad to be able to bring these messages to you. Um, I appreciate the feedback, as I've said in, in the previous uh, uh, videos. Um, it really means a lot to me when I'm able to see that, you know, people are are touched by, you know, the, the words that I am able to, to speak to you guys. Um, and that you understand and can uh, appreciate the, the message as well as relate to the experiences that I've gone through. This uh, particular message also speaks of an experience uh, that I've had uh, in my life. And um, it's called The Message of Hope is the, uh, the episode for today. And let me start off with this quote here. If life doesn't break you today, don't worry. It will try again tomorrow. And that is just so true. And I know a lot of you, again, can relate to that message. Um, I've had a rough life. Um, you know, I can't remember, you know, a whole lot of joy in my life. Um, from the time that I was a, a, a young, you know, teen um, or a young kid, even uh, younger than my teens, um, probably a six or seven years old. Up until, you know, even up in my 40s, I, I can't remember total joy and happiness. You know, there's been some days, you know, where, where things were, were, were good. Uh, there were some days where, you know, hey, we're getting by. Um, but I haven't, haven't quite remember. I can't remember a, a day of complete joy and happiness. Um, and that's to say that, you know, I, I'm hopeful. You know, I know those days will come. Uh, as long as I believe, I know that those days will, will come. Um, but there was a time when I didn't believe, you know, there was a time when, when I was hopeless. Uh, there was a time when I was feeling, you know, worthless, you know, and, and lonely. Um, and there's a difference between being alone and feeling, you know, lonely. Um, and that's where I was in 2003, 2004. I had just come back from a trip, uh, or tour in Korea, which is where I'm at now. Um, I was here from 2001, 2003, went back to the States, Fort Lewis, Washington in 2003. Um, uh, and when I arrived back to the States, I found out that my clearance had been revoked, my security clearance. Um, my job required me to have a, a top secret clearance in order to, to, to do my job as an analyst. And it had been revoked. And I found that out, you know, when I came off of leave and arrived at Fort Lewis, um, and I couldn't do my job. So what happened was I ended up being placed in a, in a back office of the security division, um, working out of my MOS, um, with a bunch of wonderful people. I mean, there's the great people that I worked with, uh, and I'll tell you about those in just a second, uh, or tell you about them in just a second. Um, but I was, there was, there was a lot of, um, hurt, you know, because I was, you know, and shame, mainly shame is what it was. I was, I was taken out of my position, of course, uh, you know, it's placed in this, this office working with civilians, uh, as a soldier. And so all the other soldiers, you know, uh, were wondering, you know, and talking, you know, why is he over in the security division, you know, and they're, you know, anytime that you're, you're, you're pulled away from your, uh, your peers, um, and your subordinates and, and you're placed in a, in a different position, you know, because you've got some type of, uh, administrative issue that's going on, you know, people talk and they, you know, the rumors start to, to circulate, uh, and, you know, people really don't know why you're there, but they just automatically assume it's something bad. Okay. Um, so I come there with this issue. Um, so I never really got a chance to, to, to make friends with anybody that was there because the, the whole time I was there, I was going through this issue. For those of you who are familiar with, sec with security clearances with the government, um, once you get them revoked, once you get your clearance revoked or suspended, it takes a while to get it back reinstated. Um, uh, on top of that, you know, it's my MOS, right? That, that kind of, it's supposed to, to be the standard, right? We're the standard bearers, you know, we're the ones that, uh, are supposed to, to not get into trouble. We're the ones that are supposed to, 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 to never have, you know, the financial issues and all those things in our, in our life, you know, but so, and, and I'm one of those guys that was in trouble during this time, right? But, uh, basically, okay. So the, this, the story with this is that, you know, this was the, the, uh, the worst time, I think, of my life. 
Uh, I mean, and I've had some terrible things. Again, I had to, I've had some terrible things happen to me uh, throughout my life. And this was one of the worst things. Um, I remember sitting in my apartment one night in the dark. I was listening to a, a CD, uh, like Wild Gospel, and I was listening to a song by uh, Angela Spivey called These Thorns. And I kept playing that song all over it and uh, over and over again. And it kept that song just kind of broke me down. I think I had a nervous breakdown. Um, and I don't even know what it, what it is, but I figured that's what it was. I mean, I don't know what had happened to me, but I was sitting there and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in tears, you know, um, I'm, uh, I, 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 I don't know what to do with myself. I'm sitting there all night long. This was like the longest night of my life. Um, as I'm watching the clock, you know, because I don't know if I want to take my life or I want to, um, I don't, I don't know what I want to do at this point. So I'm sitting there and I'm, going through all of this pain, you know, and I'm praying and I'm on my knees, you know, crying and, you know, why me? You know, why is this happening to me? Why, why, why? Um, like I said, that, that night, the, the morning finally came, you know, uh, and I survived that, you know. Um, and from that point on, you know, I started to, 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 um, to regain a little bit of hope, you know, I started to to, you know, get into my Bible and start to read and understand. And I met again, some wonderful people, Mike and Teresa Borland, who took me in and I kind of spent a lot of time at their house and I went to church with them. Uh, we participated in the the 40 days, uh, uh, purpose, uh, driven life, uh, forget the title, but 40 days, uh, purpose driven life. Um, you know, we, we did a lot of, a lot of stuff together and they, they were wonderful people. I mean, that's like, she's like my sister. Um, so much they've done for me uh, and helped me to get through those times, those terrible times. You know, was, I was hopeless at that time. You know, I, and I'm sure that if I hadn't met with them and started to 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 go uh, out to their house and go to church with them, I'm sure that I probably wouldn't be here today. Uh, I probably would have taken my life at some point. But um, forgiveness, uh, you know, I was carrying that guilt with me for a very long time and it just kind of it was just too much for me, or at least I thought it was too much for me to handle. And that night, you know, like I said, could have been my last. Um, I didn't realize that, you know, my sins, you know, and those those burdens and things that I was carrying with me had already been forgiven. You know, God forgives us. I mean, there's nothing that's too big for him to forgive. Um, and I didn't realize that, you know, so I, I had no hope. Um, I was I was uh, I was I was again, I was feeling lonely. I didn't know what to do with myself, but. Here I am. It's like 10, 11 years later, you know, things have gotten better. Uh, again, I'm, I'm still hopeful for, for even better things to come. Um, and I already see those things happening, you know, and I, I look at the things that I'm thankful for today. You know, my wife and my kids here, uh, my daughter who's back in the States, uh, in college, you know, my mother and father who are both, you know, well into their seventies are doing, and they're doing well. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, both on my mother's side and my father's side. I'm thankful for a whole bunch of things. And if I hadn't had, I, you know, taken my life back then, there's been so much that, uh, that I would have missed out on. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad I'm thankful that I'm here today. Uh, and my message of hope to you is to, is to think about those things, you know, for anyone out there who's, you know, thinking about, you know, taking your life or anyone out there who's feeling, you know, uh, depressed or those, uh, or anyone who's feeling, uh, you know, remorse and, uh, you feel like you got a lot of weight on your shoulders. Uh, give it all to God, you know, let him take care of your, your problems. Um, and he's more than willing, uh, to, to do it. Um, cause he loves you. And, um, it took me a while to understand that. And, 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 and now I, you know, I completely understand it. And I'm so thankful, uh, that I'm here today with, with you, sharing this with you, doing things that I've never done before or never even thought I could even do. Um, because again, you know, I, I'm so used to being by myself that, you know, things like this uh, were, were just almost like impossible things uh, uh, or po- impossible for me to to imagine doing. Um, let me read for you real quick uh, my little message of hope here. Romans 5, chapter uh, 2 through 5. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit 
who has been given to us. God bless you. Thank you for listening to this message. This is Barry Canada from L3Success and LunchtimeRecordings.com. Take care and God bless.